Greetings, Pathfinders, and welcome to the Find the Path Ventures actual play of the Mummy's Mask Adventure Path recap of book one. This is going to contain spoilers of book one, so if you're wanting to listen, um, don't listen to this. Under the watchful eye of Phrasma's temple in the Osirian city of Wati, a lottery has begun to allow brave adventurers to enter the necropolis. On Eurus, an Azamar cleric of Horus, Sudi, a catfolk monk of Phrasma, Sagira, a street smart Suli ranger, and Citra, a human rogue from An, came together to explore their sites. This group of mostly noble explorers adopted the moniker the Doorkeepers of the Duat. Their first sight from the lottery was the tomb of Akintepi, who was a well respected general in life. The Doorkeepers faced many traps meant to prevent its plunder, and even fought off an army of miniature warriors displayed in one of the rooms. On their way back to the living side of the half-dead city, the doorkeepers encounter a wounded panther being set upon by a ghoul. They save the cat, and Sagira takes her home to the Temple of Bastet where she can recover. Before moving on to their second site, the group made a few friends including the rakish Falto of the Cryptfinders, Mad Dog Marin the Halfling, and Velriana of the Scorched Hand, a group dedicated to Nethys. Velriana seems to have a distaste for how the lottery is being run. She's desperate to find the sanctum of the Rudite Eye and is clearly probing groups at the local inn, the Tooth and Hookah, to see if anyone has received it. Next for the doorkeepers is the House of Pantheru, a haunted noble's estate. They learn more about the sad history of the Plague of Madness that turned Wati into the half-dead city it now is. Onuris and Citra are briefly possessed by a pair of young lovers torn apart by the illness, and Onuris catches the plague himself. Sagira takes the engagement ring that belonged to the young woman Citra had been possessed by, ignoring the possibility it could be cursed. There also seems to be a shadowy form stalking the group. Sudi is the first to catch sight of the figure, but the others have their own experiences. Though it seems that the figure in black has yet to reveal who they are, it does make the group uneasy and they all have a bad feeling about it. As luck would have it, their final sight is none other than the sanctum of the Rudite Eye. They keep the information close to the vest, and Citra and Sagira decide to go have a girl's night out on the town. Citra gets closer to the charming Falto, and Sagira does a little flirting with the Dory, the mercenary working with the scorched hand. When the girls get back to the Temple of Bastet, where they are staying, Sagira's father steps out of the shadows and informs her that her mother has been killed. This hits Sagira harder than expected as she didn't have a good relationship with her family. Meanwhile, Onuris has a fever dream or vision that takes him out of the city where he believes he has a conversation with a falcon representing Horus. Thankfully, Sudi finds him before he gets into any real trouble or spreads the plague to others, and returns him to the Temple of Bastet where he is being tended. In the morning, Onuris gets patched up and is cured of the plague and the doorkeeper set out to their final site, now cautious of shadowy figures that could attack at any time. As they approach the building, they are accosted by members of the Silver Chain, a gang in Wati that is known for grave robbing and kidnapping. At the end of a frustrating fight involving a lot of Tanglefoot bags and nets, one of the Silver Chain members gets away. Sagira immediately runs after the man, which is totally not a response to her helplessness at losing her mother, and Sudi chases after to make sure she's okay. Citra and Onuris stay behind to deal with the remaining gang members. To little surprise, they learn from their beaten opponents that a woman in a large hat, aka Velriana, had hired the Silver Chain to slow the doorkeepers so that the Scorched Hand could investigate the Sanctum of the Erudite Eye first. They decide to leave the Silver Chain tied up for the guards and delve into the Sanctum, determined to catch up to the Scorched Hand. Sagira, Sudi, and a young member of the Silver Chain return with the guards shortly. With all that wrapped up, the doorkeepers enter the Sanctum of the Erudite Eye. Sagira notices signs of bloody bare footprints along with the disturbance of what they assume is the Scorched Hand. In the Doorkeeper's continued exploration, they find a hidden room radiating necromatic energy, but with the source mysteriously missing. Based on the fact that the item appears to have fit on the blank face of a statue, the group concludes it might be a mask that held such power. It seems they weren't the first in the room, however, because there are scorch marks on the walls from whoever took the item. There is also an ominous warning carved into the wall telling any who read it that they should not be tempted by the mask's powers and should not attempt its destruction. Eventually they catch up to the Scorched Hand, and a brutal fight ensues. The doorkeepers spare everyone, save Velriana who perished before healing could be dealt. A truce is made between the doorkeepers and the surviving members, Adori the mercenary, Kelru a priest of Nethys, and his wizard consort Azaz. Together they finish exploring the rest of the sanctum and thus finish their sights for the lottery. There's much for the doorkeepers to ponder, but they know one thing for sure. Sebdi the Crocodile, the head priestess of Phrasma in the city, 
needs to hear about what they have found before something terrible happens. Pick up in episode 28, the one with the well-timed spell.